Hello again, I am Fluff and this is Rise of Flight, your premier World War 1 air combat simulator. I happened to download and install the demo or starter version for this title fairly recently and I hadn't really taken any time to get into it. However, there was, and I believe still is for a couple more days, an Indie Gala Rise of Flight bundle offering the Channel Battles edition with a couple of DLCs along with several other games. As I record this you can still pick the lot up for under $10 so if you're interested, it is an excellent opportunity. The only potential downside is that with the Steam version of Rise of Flight, you have to buy the planes in packs, rather than picking up the ones you want individually, but there's a great guide on the Steam forums as to which packs you might want to pick up and what they've got in them. So I think that probably comes down to your personal preference. In any case, I decided to try my hand at World War One planes. And after trying the career mode and ending two runs, which really would only make history if you're looking for a pilot who managed to land his plane upside down without a tail after shooting his own propeller off, I thought it'd be a good idea to go back to basics and try baby steps. So I chose one of the planes I'd actually heard of, the Sopwith Camel, and just set off on what is essentially the free roam mode. Well, my maiden flight in the Camel was not in point of fact of flight because I couldn't actually make it take off, and I crashed into a stand of trees. And that only happened after I spent about 15 minutes working out how to get the engine started, hint it's the appropriate mixture, so I clearly need to reapply for my simmer license too. I still didn't really have much luck going after targets on the ground, surprise surprise you should probably dedicate some time to your flight stick response curves and such before you take your aircraft out to fly. So what I mostly worked out how to do was crash, a lot, sometimes into other planes, Oh, and get shot down like a pro as well. The Sotwith Camel, it turns out, is not and was not a new friendly plane, and I ended up switching to the apparently average as unseasoned Porridge Albatross, and I have enjoyed some success with that plane. Success in this case means that my latest flight netted me a kill, and I did survive my landing, despite managing to convert it into a crash at the last minute. Now, tales of one player's ineptitude aside, the real point of this video is to do with how I ended up playing the game in the first place. I'm not into First World War aviation, but everyone I've talked to with time in Rise of Flight has given a positive account, even if they didn't invest anything past time in the starter version, hence I thought it might be worth a go. I haven't yet tried the multiplayer segment, but certainly the single player is pretty compelling, and there's settings enough so you can make it an action game or the full-blown sim, where you're going to want to research the plane you're flying. So, you expect things like the Sopwith Camel's dislike of turning left in general, or the Albatross's engine going pop at 1600 RPM, which caught me up for quite a while because I wasn't throttling back in dives. I did wonder why oil was constantly going everywhere. The career mode especially has been great to play after work to relax, uh, going on air patrols where absolutely nothing happens and then you land, although that's quite likely to sound like hell to you, I don't know. I found it brilliant, personally. In any case, it's certainly worth a go if you're into flight games, but you haven't tried these sort of early birds, the World War One era stuff, and it looks and sounds perfectly good too. So based on 9 hours, I give it 27 and a quarter fake Rolexes out of 41. And until next time, take care.